Today we're going to take a look at RAD Masked Input. The RAD Masked Input control is part of the Telerik RAD controls for Silverlight and WPF control suite for .NET and XAML development. While looking at the Masked Input control, to get us started we're going to look at how you add them to your project, how you can control the selection when your Masked Input control gets focus, how spin control is built into your mask control and how you can turn it off, and how you can prompt the user when there's empty content. Let's get started by creating a new application. We'll make that a Telerik Silverlight application. And let's call this application Rad Masked Input dot getting started. Click OK. We'll accept Silverlight 5, and when the Telerik configuration wizard comes up, we're going to ask it to add input. That will add the input reference as well as any dependent references. You can see that when the reference is open, that we have the Telerik Windows Controls, which was a dependent reference on Telerik Windows Controls input. Let's begin by creating a stack panel into which we will stack four versions of the masked input control. First, we're going to use namespace Telerik, and we're going to add a rad masked in text input, and let's give that a name. Next, we'll add an instance of the rad masked currency input, and name that one as well. Third, we'll add the rad masked Daytime input control, which as you can imagine is for masking dates and times. And finally, we'll add the rad mask numeric input control and give that a name as well. When we run the application, the browser will come up and we can see the four mask controls. The text mask control allows you to type as many characters as you have designated for that control. We're here we're using the default and if you try to go past then it just replaces that last character. If we go down to the currency control you can see the dollar sign on the left and as we type the numbers are pushed over to the left that's the default behavior and if I hit the dot then I'll be able to go in and enter the sense as well. On the date, we can just type over the short version of the date, which is the default. The slashes are put in for us. We can hit the erase or delete button, which you can in fact turn off and not have displayed. And finally, in the numeric, works very much like the currency. The numbers are pushed left until you hit the dot and get the decimal, and you can decide how many decimal places you would like. Let's return to our XAML and cut down just to the currency input. The default placeholder is an underscore, but we can replace that with any character at all. Here we're replacing it with a dollar sign, and you'll see that instead of having underscores across, we've got dollar signs all the way that get replaced as we enter values. You can choose whatever character you like to be the replacement character, depending on the needs of your application. If we click on the little arrow next to the input control, the masked input control in the designer, we see many of the properties can be set directly and these will be reflected in the XAML as well. So we can decide whether the clear button is visible, is this a read-only control, what mask we want to use, and so forth right in the control itself in the designer. We can create a very simple mask that accepts four characters. When we enter that control, we can enter the four characters. We've set this to be numeric, so it's going to accept four numbers. There is an additional attribute that we can add, which is the empty content attribute which is what the control will display when it is empty. Now when we start, 
we see that empty content. As soon as we click in there, we're ready to accept four digits. And it continues to work as normal. But if we delete all of the content, tab to the end and then tab out, it goes back and displays its empty content. In this case, please enter four digits. Let's add a text box to the stack panel just above our mask text input control. And that will allow us to play a little bit with the focus as we move from one to the other. Set the horizontal alignment to left. Let's knock that height down a little bit from 50 to 30. And now we have a text box above our masked input. Let's set the selection on focus. And in this case, we're going to select all. This is an enumerated value. We're choosing select all when our masked input gets the focus. So if we type a little bit into the text box and then hit tab, we come into the mass text box and everything is selected. The entire four digits are selected. Had there been any digits there, they would all be selected. We have a number of other options in the selection on focus. You can see the drop down of the enumerated values. Let's set caret to beginning. Run the application again. Once again, we're going to type into the text box and then hit tab, bringing the focus to our mask input. And you see that the caret is set to the beginning, ready to enter characters. Let's add two masked text boxes, which are very, very similar to the masked text input controls. We'll set one to numeric and one to date time. Whether you're using the masked text input or the masked numeric input, if your control is set to numeric or to date time, you can click on it and use the mouse wheel to spin the value. Here we're spinning the value of the month, and we can spin the value of the day as well. You see that you have to have the focus on the control for the spinner to work. The default is for spinning to be on. We can return to our control and set is spin enabled to false. And in that case, when we run the application and we click on the value, let's add a value here and then click on it. And no matter how much we spin the wheel, that value will not be affected because we've set is spin enabled to false. So I hope that you see how easy it is to use the mask input controls. For Telerik, this is Jesse Liberty. I look forward to talking with you again soon. And please stay tuned for additional videos in this series on mask text input.